Happy New Year. I'm Neil Myers from WineExpedition.com. Welcome to 2010. I uh, wanted to give you a quick recap of what we, uh, we were pouring on New Year's Eve. And uh, so thanks for stopping by the site. Or if you're watching this somewhere else on the internet, uh, we thank our friends at TubeMogul.com for spreading our, our videos across the internet. Uh, hope you had a good New Year's Eve. We sure did. Uh, 2010, uh, looking forward to it. 2009 was a, uh, a good year for WineExpedition.com. A lot of fun, challenging year for our economy, and certainly uh, we're looking forward to 2010 being better for the economy and for the wine industry and for all of us. Uh, so we celebrated uh, the end of 2009. Uh, had four bottles. My friend Fernando and his family stopped by, and we had a mild manner New Year's Eve celebration. Um, I'm just going to go through what we have. I have a couple sips left. Uh, I tried to save some for uh, the webisode, but it wasn't very successful. Uh, but here's what we had. Uh, started out with a Pinot Noir from Oregon. This is the Arath. 2007 Oregon Pinot Noir. Um, Dick Arath is one of the pioneers of, uh, of Oregon wine. Uh, certainly knows Pinot Noir and knows Oregon wine country. Um, they have a lot of different uh, wines. They make a lot of different Pinots. This one is the just their, their sort of uh, entry level Pinot Noir. Uh, it's like you know $17, $18, under $20. And um, nice light color. Uh, I have to say I uh, I've had some amazing wines from Arath, and this this one was okay. Um, you know, we'd just been up in, in Portland and up in Oregon uh, wine country not too long ago, and uh, every every single wine I tasted up there was elegant and subtle and handcrafted and um, refined. And I thought that this fruit, mind you, this is the next day. It's opened up nicely. It's good fruit, but it's just a bit. Um, sort of brash for me, a little bit unbridled. Um, it's, again, it's nice fruit, you know, sort of aromas of spice on the nose and, you know, big black cherries, but it just, uh, it's just, it was just a bit uh, unbridled, a bit brash, a bit sort of in my face uh, compared to some of the, you know, Pinots I had from Oregon. And again, this is their entry level model, if you will. And uh, I will say that it was good fruit and it was under $20. So uh, it was a good way to start our evening and, uh, you know, I didn't pour the glass out or anything, but um, just, you know, it, it was good. It was all right. I've tasted better from Wrath and I've tasted better from, from Oregon. So moving on, uh, I don't have any left of the next wine, if that gives you an indication. Uh, this is a, a Bordeaux uh, wine from uh, Chateau de Gouy. It's a 2003. Uh, this, this, uh, this wine comes from the uh, Cote de Castellon, Castellon uh, which is a relatively new appellation in Bordeaux. Uh, it's... Uh, 89, I believe it uh, was was initiated, and this is a blend of uh, Merlot and Cabernet Franc, and um, it's all gone. And it was a really big wine, big fruit, big uh, sort of plums and uh, dark berries, but with lots of smoke and spice and just layer upon layer, nice tannic structure. Just a really good, you know, big Bordeaux, good drinking wine. And we polished off every last drop. About a $40 bottle, $38, $40, uh, but definitely worth checking out. Uh, uh, a special wine for a special occasion. So this one was much appreciated. Uh, my buddy Fernando actually brought it over from his collection. Um, then uh, as, as, as the night wore on, and it was getting closer and closer to, uh, to midnight, we got into some sparkling wines, you know, appropriately enough. Um, this one was the uh, Sophia uh, Blanc de Blancs 2008 from uh, Monterey County. It's uh, Francis Ford Coppola's uh, sparkling wine. It's sort of a, a, a tribute to his daughter, Sofia Coppola. Uh, it's a blend of, I believe, Pinot Blanc, Muscat, and Sauvignon Blanc. Um, bubbly, a lot of citrus, uh, like lemon peels uh, characteristic. And that lemon peel, sort of at the very end of the, of, 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 of the wine, it was like a, a lemon peel chalky sort of thing in the finish. And I wasn't crazy about it. Um, it was on sale for 12 bucks. It's normally like, you know, in the 16, 18 dollar range. I wasn't crazy about it for that, that reason. That sort of finish kind of caught me the wrong way. My buddy Fernando liked it. And again, it's all gone. So if that's any testament, uh, it, uh, I didn't pour any glasses out either. So I'll say that. But, uh, you know, for $12, uh, again, the grapes all come from Monterey County. Um, we finished that one off. And then um, I thought I've been saving this, this next bottle for several years now. You know, it's one of those things when you have a, a nice bottle of wine, a nice bottle of champagne, you sort of, uh, 
you're, you're keeping it for some special occasion, but yet the special occasion, it seems like the occasion's never special enough. No, I'm not gonna open that one yet. I'm gonna save it for, for next time. And all of a sudden, you know, you blink your eye and 10 years have gone by and you still have a bottle of wine that you've been saving for that special occasion, which, you know, what are you saying? The last 10 years have had no special, special dates and that's certainly not the case, but I've been saving this one. And, um, you know, again, the, saying goodbye to 2009, which we had a great time here at Wine Expedition, but it was a, a tough year for the wine industry and a tough year for uh, the economy. And looking forward to 2010, it seemed like a good time to open up this bottle. Um, this is uh, Dom Perignon. You know, this is the sort of flagship sparkling wine from uh, from you know uh, renowned champagne house Moet and Chandon, and uh, they only make this in years when the when the harvest is exceptional. So uh, this was from 1993. Um, so. 16 years ago, 17 years ago. Um, you know, this wine's been sitting in this bottle for a long time, waiting for my special occasion to open up. And so New Year's Eve, uh, uh, on, on the eve of turning the calendar to the 2010 page, we decided to pop the cork on this one at midnight. Uh, my hands were a little clumsy and I actually, I think it was like 15 seconds into the new year when I finally opened it. But, uh, and frankly, you know, I, um, Sparkling wine is something that I've only begun to appreciate in, in the more recent times of my wine uh, expedition. And I was wondering if, you know, it was going to even still be, you know, if, if it was already maybe on a, on a downward uh, curve, it, that it, you know, its best days were behind it. So I wasn't sure what to expect, to be honest with you. And uh, I opened it up and uh, the cork uh, popped with a resounding pop uh, and poured it and, and the bubbles were, were, were abundant and uh, created a nice sort of froth in your mouth, sort of like the head of a beer, or a head of root beer. It, it didn't look that way in the glass, but once you got it in your mouth, it just created this nice sort of creamy texture. And the, the question of whether the wine would still be good was quickly answered. It was amazing. Um, you realize why this wine costs what it does. It's an expensive bottle of wine meant for a very special occasion, but it's incredible how this wine tasted. It, it, you know, the, the, the nose was, was, was very, very pleasant, uh, sweet, uh, citrusy pears. But once I got it in my mouth, it was like a combination of, of toasted almonds and honey. Just creamy honey, toasted almonds, just a, a really elegant, you know, the bubbles are, 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 are playing inside your mouth and those flavors of, of honey and burnt almonds just sort of, you know, lingered and, and, and just moved around in my mouth. It was incredible. And uh, just, you know, everybody in the room kind of looked at each other and went, cheers. And it was that kind of a moment. Uh, you know, when you have a wine like that, that's sort of a defining moment, a defining wine, you, you, everyone kind of stops, the room stops, everyone looks at each other and, it, and you go, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. And this, this is one of those wines, there's a little bit left, no more bubbles, uh, unfortunately, but I'm going to have a sip right now just because. And then, yeah, it's definitely flat and, and done, but I'm still getting... Uh, it's honey and, and toasted almonds, and that's what this—that's what—that's what we tasted uh, in all its glory on uh, on New Year's Eve. So that that was that was the uh, the final bottle of the night, and it was the uh, definitely the, the the best bottle of the night. And uh, there you go. N not more. N no more need be said. It was a 1993 Dom Perignon, waiting all these years for the right night, and New Year's Eve was it. We opened it up, and we all enjoyed it. And um, just a, a tad left. Uh, the next day with no bubbles, but I'm uh, I'm enjoying it anyway. So there you go. Uh, I hope you all had a, a safe and happy new year and uh, looking forward to spending a lot of time with you in 2010. By all means, if you had a new year's one that you want to tell us about that you enjoyed or that you didn't enjoy, uh, let us know what you did over the holidays, what you drank. We'd love to hear about it. Until next time, I'm Neil Myers from WineExpedition.com wishing you all a happy new year. And uh, again, we'll see you in 2010. Looking forward to seeing a lot of you. Cheers.